In the previous video, we were introduced to Nuke Studio's Export Manager. Now that we have some basic knowledge of how it works, in this video, we'll learn how we can build tracks on our timeline from the export structure, as well as how to automatically create Nuke Comp scripts directly through the sequence timeline. In this first example, we're going to talk about building tracks from export structure. What that's going to allow you to do is basically take all your shots here. We'll grab all these shots. And we know that we're waiting on robot renders to come in. And we may have just gotten word that they're ready for us. So what we want to do is import those into our timeline. And the way we can do that is if we build an export structure that matches to the exact location of where those robot renders are saved. In order to do that, we'll select all our clips here that we have selected. We'll go into the export manager, control shift E. I see I've already created some prior to this, but we're going to create one from scratch. So what we want to do is add a new one in here, a new preset. We'll call this robot import. Now for the export to path, you want to direct this or point this to where the 3D renders are for the robot, whether it's on a network, local disk, wherever it might be. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to choose the folder of where those are actually located. Okay. Now we want to tell Nuke Studio what to do once we get to that main folder where these renders are located at. So this is where we start to build up our folder structure and you want it to match exactly to how it's set up or where you're reading from. For this one, let me actually just pull open the folder structure. Take a look at that real quick. So here we have folder structure. This export to path is pointed to right here. Then we're going to want to go into our 3D folder, which is right here, 3D folder. And then the 3D folder, we're going to want to name or create a shot folder. So we want to look into the shot folder here. So if we use our shot token, type in shot, that's going to look into one of these folders here. It's going to go through all these folders. We're going to go into that folder. We want to look into the renders folder. So we're going to need to create a renders folder and export structure. Create a renders folder. All right. Now within that renders folder, we're going to want to match this naming convention that's been used here to name these renders. So we can see here, this first prefix is the shot name, then underscore, we've got in robot, the word robot, and underscore, there's a version, and there's four frame padding here, and then .exr. So we're going to need to add all of that into a file name. Let's go ahead and add into our renders folder, a new file. We don't want to leave it as file name. We want to name it as the shot because that's what the render was named. So we're going to once again type in shot, use the shot token. Remember is underscore robot with a capital R, then underscore again. There was a version number, so we can use the version token on here. And there was a dot. And then we had four frame padding, and dot, and then EXR. Now we need to tell it what type of content is contained within this file. So we know that this is going to be an external render coming in from outside somewhere else that we want to bring into our timeline. With that all set up, I can go ahead and close this. We don't need to export anything. And we're going to save that template. Now that we've created that export structure template that's basically pointing to our, our 3D renders, we can right click on all our selected shots here. We're going to build track from that export structure we just created. Let's give our new track a name. We'll call it robot. And we'll select that export structure we created, robot import. Okay, looking good. It's pointing to that folder I want to read from. And it's going to read for or look for renders named according to this here. I'm going to hit build, see what happens. As you can see, it's starting to populate our timeline with all those 3D renders that came in or that are available to us now. If there wasn't any 3D renders available or if they haven't been rendered yet, it's going to be a red container like this. If I look down at this, I can tell that this particular shot didn't have any robot in it because we didn't tag it with the robot. So that's easy to, enough just to delete out of there. Same thing for this one as well. And you'll notice on this particular clip, there's some red on either side of it. This basically just means that the clip length itself 
right here the blue is not as long as the actual shot length that we're trying to go for based off of the tracks below here so you can see if i hover over this my handles negative 10 negative 9 so i'm missing that many frames to fill out this entire shot i could retime this just to get that to fill the frames for now we'll just leave this because we don't know you know where this robot might fit in there let's take an actual look at this footage and see what's going on here maybe we can figure it out so we have this robot coming in off the screen it stops right there let me just turn on my track blending so we can see the tracks below it there we go so maybe this robot might need to be re repositioned maybe it's happening somewhere back here you can see him in the background while this is recording until we get further instruction on that we'll just leave this as it is for right now and instead we'll go up to the front of the sequence here with kind of the same situation a little bit different though because this one is just a single frame that needs to be retimed to fit the entire shot length here let's hop into informing workspace shift f1 on the keyboard we'll select our shot so we can find it on our spreadsheet there it is there's a few ways we can retime this first what i want to do is actually i'm going to take I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit more with my middle mouse wheel, zooming in on that. And it seems that our frame is falling in the middle of this shot. Now, if I were to try to do like a freeze frame of this, what's going to happen is it's going to take the first frame of this shot and hold it for us. And now if we were to look at the first frame, obviously it's blank because there's nothing there. So what we need to do first is take this frame I'm going to move this all the way to the front of the shot here. So if you hover your multi-tool down at the bottom, you'll see you get your handles, click and hold the left mouse button, then just drag that frame to the front of the shot. So now it's on frame one for us up here. Now we can go ahead and retime this. So let me select my shot in here. A few different ways, as I mentioned. First way being that you could just set the source duration to zero. Set that to zero. And notice it turns it blue for us, indicating it's a freeze frame. And now that single frame lasts for the entire duration of the shot. You may have also noticed that when I set this to zero, the speed here also went to 0%. And I'm going to actually switch this over to frames just so we can see a little easier that our frames with the source in and the source out are set to be the same. So that's another way you can kind of create the freeze frame. I'll just change that back to the time code for now. All right, so that's all set. We've just learned how to build a track from an export structure that we set up through our export manager. Now you'll notice that there was another build track option in here. So if I were to, maybe we'll build this track here. If I right click and say build track, you can see export tag. So what that means is say you're using Hero in another instance, maybe, or maybe even New Studio. Oh, we'll just go ahead and export this one out of here. So select it. We'll right click, export, or control shift E on the keyboard. Let's export this as a process it as a shot. Do a basic nuke shot. I'm going to choose where I want to send this to just for demo purposes. Okay. Now I'm going to hit export. Now anytime you export from either Nuke Studio or Hero, it's going to create an export tag on on the shot that you're exporting out. So we'll see that in a second when I hit export here. Great, it's gone through my export queue, done its thing. No, I don't need to keep that. Throw all that out of there, go back to our shot. Now it's kind of hard to see, but it wasn't there before. It's created this nuke icon on here, indicating that it now has an export tag from either Hero or Nuke Studios timeline. Now what I can do is right click on this, build track from export tag. See, that's available for me now. Now, if I had multiple exports, it would list the exports that I've done on this particular shot, and I'd be able to choose which one I want to actually bring in here. Now, by default, it's going to just create the new project file or comp container for us on our timeline. If I actually want to bring in the render, if there's a render for this, I can uncheck this, and it'll bring in the renders rather than the nuke script. I'm going to change that and we'll just call this comp track and hit build. Build it for us if we look up in our timeline. 
Here's our comp track, and here's the script it built for us. Now the great thing about Nuke Studio is that it's going to allow me just to jump back and forth from my timeline into the NukeX node graph. Before I do that, I'm just going to change my workspace to finishing, so that way we have our sequence and our node graph tabs available for us. I'm going to double click my comp container now. You'll see it automatically pops us in to the NukeX node graph. So I can begin doing some comp work on here if I want to. And then jump right back into my timeline. So in this video, we learned how to build tracks from the export structure, as well as build tracks from export tags, where the export tags may have been created previously from an export in Hero timeline or from the Nuke Studio timeline. In the next video, we'll go over how to automatically generate the comp scripts for all of our shots in our timeline now.